Hey, what's up guys? My name is The Channel. Welcome back to my C++ series. Today we're going to be talking all about smart pointers in C++. So smart pointers are a topic that has come up a lot recently in my videos and people requesting this and what, what is a smart pointer? Should I be using smart pointers and all that? Today we're just going to talk about what they are. We're not really going to get into depth about what, why I think you should or shouldn't be using them and all of that stuff and my opinions about smart pointers in general. I'm going to save that for another video. Today we're just going to focus on what a smart pointer is and what it can do for you. So earlier we talked about what new and delete does. New allocates memory on the heap and delete is needed to delete that memory, to free that memory because it won't be freed automatically. Smart pointers are a way to automate that process. That's all that they are, right? Smart pointers mean that when you call new, you don't have to call delete. And in fact, in many cases with smart pointers, we don't even have to call new. So a lot of people tend to have this kind of programming style in C++ where they never ever call new or delete. And smart pointers are basically a way to make that happen. So smart pointers are essentially a wrapper around a real raw pointer. When you create a smart pointer and you make it, it will call new and allocate your memory for you. And then based on which smart pointer you use, that memory will at some point be automatically freed. So let's take a look at the first kind of and simplest smart pointer that we have, unique pointer. So a unique pointer is a scoped pointer, meaning that when that pointer goes out of scope, it will it will get destroyed and it will call delete. We actually talked about how object lifetimes work and how you can leverage the power of stack allocation and all that in the last video, so definitely check that out if you haven't already. But that is basically how scoped pointers work or unique pointers. The reason they're called unique pointers is because they have to be unique. You can't copy a unique pointer because if you copy a unique pointer, the memory that it's pointing to, they'll basically you'll have two pointers, two unique pointers pointing to the same block of memory. And when one of them dies, it will free that memory meaning that suddenly that second unique pointer you had pointing to the same block of memory is pointing to memory that's been freed. So you cannot copy unique pointers. Unique pointers are for when you want a scoped pointer and that is the only reference to that pointer you actually want. Let's take a look at an example of a unique pointer. So the first thing you'll need to do to get access to all of these smart pointers is include memory. Now we have this entity class here. All it is is a constructor and a destructor. We print when we create the entity and when we destroy the entity, just so that we can kind of look into the behavior of these smart pointers. So over here in main, if I want to create a unique pointer which lasts in a certain scope, so I've made a new scope here, an empty scope, and inside here I'm going to allocate my entity using a unique pointer. The way I'll do that is I'll type in std unique pointer, I'll give it the template argument of entity, and then I'll give it a name such as entity. And then I've kind of got two options, I can either call the constructor here and type in new entity like this. Note that you actually won't be able to do this kind of uh, construction because if you look at unique pointer, the constructor is actually explicit, meaning that you do have to call the constructor explicitly. There's no implicit kind of conversion or converting constructor. So that's one way to make unique point, and then you can kind of access it like you would anything else. If I wanted to call a function here, we don't even have any functions, but if I were to call a function here, I would just access it through the arrow operator and everything would be exactly the same as if this was just a raw pointer. The preferred way though to construct this would actually be to assign it to std make unique with that entity there. The primary reason that that's important for unique pointers is actually due to exception safety. We'll talk about exceptions at some point in this series. I don't like exceptions at all, so that's gonna be an interesting episode whenever that happens. But anyway, the preferred way to make this is to call make unique because it is slightly safer if, if the constructor happens to throw an exception, you won't end up having a dangling pointer with no reference and thus a memory leak. Anyway, the idea is that once we make this unique pointer, we can call whatever method we want. And you'll see that if I hit F5 to run my program, our entity gets created here. And then if I hit F10 to get out of the scope, our entity is destroyed now. Okay, so automatically when the scope ends, our entity gets destroyed. That's the simplest smart pointer that we have. It's very useful. It's got a very low overhead. It doesn't really even have an overhead. It's just a stack allocated object and when, when that stack allocated object dies, it will call delete on your pointer and free that memory. The problem with this is, as I mentioned, if you wanna copy that, that point, if you wanna kind of share that pointer, maybe pass it into a function or have another class store it, you're gonna run into a problem because you, you can't copy it. And if you take a look at this, if I was to try and make another unique pointer here, called E0 or something like that and assign it to entity, I actually can't do that. And you'll get kind of an error message here, which looks a bit weird. If you go to this unique pointer definition and you actually scroll down a bit, you'll see that the copy constructor and the copy assignment operator are actually deleted, which is why you get a compile error if you try and do something like this. And that's, that's there specifically to prevent you from digging yourself into a grave because you cannot copy this. Because, because again, as soon as one of these unique pointers dies, they all essentially kind of die because the memory, the underlying memory of that 
heap allocated object gets freed. So if you like sharing, that's where shared pointer comes in. And shared pointer kind of works a bit, a bit differently. It's a bit more hardcore, if you will, because it does a lot of other stuff under the hood. The way that a shared pointer is implemented is actually kind of up to the compiler and the standard library that you're using with your compiler. However, in pretty much all systems that I've seen, it's, it's using something called reference counting. We're gonna have a specific video about reference counting. And in fact, a lot of these things in the standard library, we're actually gonna have videos where we implement them ourselves because they're great examples of how C++ works and how we can kind of use C++. So we're going to definitely write our own unique pointer, smart pointer, shared pointer, all of that kind of stuff in the future, as well as other kind of standard library features. So if you if you want that, that's coming. But the way the shared pointer works is via reference counting. And reference counting is basically a practice where you keep track of how many references you have to your pointer. And as soon as that reference count reaches zero, that's when it gets deleted. So as an example, I create one shared pointer. I then create another shared pointer and copy that. My ref count is now two. So one for the first one, one for the second one, that's two. When the first one dies, my reference count goes down one. So I'm on one now. And then when the last one dies, my reference count goes back to zero and I'm dead. So the memory gets freed. So to use a shared pointer, you just type in std shared pointer. Let me just get rid of this compile error. We'll do entity over here as the template parameter. I'll do shared entity as the name, and then I'll set this equal to std make shared entity. Now, in this case, you could have also done a new entity like this. And you can see that compiles fine, except you definitely don't want to do that with shared pointer. With unique pointer, really the only reason not to call new directly is because of exception safety. But with shared pointer, there's actually going to be a difference because shared pointer has to allocate another block of memory called a control block where it stores that reference count. And if you create, if you first create a new entity and then pass it into the shared pointer constructor, it has to allocate, that's, that's two allocations, right? Because you're constructing the entity first. And then the shared pointer has to, has to construct its control block. Whereas if you do make shared, it can actually construct them together, which is a, a lot more efficient. And also for those of you people who hate new and delete, this obviously gets rid of the new keyword from your code base because you're just calling std make shared instead of new entity. So I bet you guys love that. So with shared pointer, you can of course copy it and but yeah, I mean, if I type in code like this, it's gonna work perfectly fine. I could also move this outside to here and just have this over here. Let's let's make another scope for fun so I can kind of demonstrate how this works. I'm going to drag this over here. All right, so I've got kind of two scopes here. In the first one, I've got E0, that's it. And then in this one, I have my shared entity. I'm going to assign E0 with my shared entity. I'm just going to comment out or get rid of all that other code with the unique pointer. So now what will happen is if I hit F5, the first thing that's gonna happen is I'm going to construct my entity. So that's done, good, it's created. I'm going to assign this. When the first scope dies, this shared entity dies. However, you can see that it hasn't destroyed my entity yet, it hasn't deleted it because E0 is still alive and holding a reference to that entity. Now when I hit F10, that's when it dies. When all the references are gone, when all of the stack allocated kind of objects that keep track of all, all the shared pointers, when they die, when they get freed from memory, all of them, that's when your underlying entity gets deleted. All right, and finally, there's something else that you can use with shared pointer called a weak pointer. And what you can do with that is just declare it like it was anything else and kind of give it the value of a shared entity. And what this does, what this does is kind of the same as if you were to copy that shared entity and increase the ref count, except it doesn't, it doesn't increase the ref count. When you assign a shared pointer to another shared pointer, thus copying it, it will increase the ref count. But when you assign a shared pointer to a weak pointer, it won't increase the ref count. So this is great for if you kind of don't want to take ownership of the entity. Like you're, you might be storing a list of entities and you don't really care if they're valid or not, but you just want to store like a reference to them, right? With weak pointer, you can kind of ask it, hey, is this, is, is this still even alive? And if it is, you can do whatever you need to do, but it won't keep it alive because it doesn't actually increase the ref count. Meaning that if I was to, was to actually replace this shared entity with a weak pointer, and then basically do the exact same thing that I did before, then the entity will get created here. It'll get assigned to the shared entity. But when I exit the first scope, that is when it gets destroyed. So this weak pointer is now pointing to an invalid entity. However, you can ask a weak pointer, are you expired? Are you still valid? So that's pretty much smart pointers. Now, as for when you should use them, you should probably try and use them all the time. If I'm being completely honest, they automate your memory management. They, they, they get rid of, they, they prevent you from accidentally leaking memory by forgetting to call delete. They're really quite useful. Shared pointer specifically has a bit of an overhead because of its reference counting systems. But then again, a lot of people, a lot of people who tend to write their own memory management systems tend to have a bit of an overhead as well. So it's kind of, 
it's a very delicate topic because you have this new breed of C++ programmers now who only use these kind of features. And then you have like the old school people who use new and delete. I'm kind of a bit of both because there is a time where you want to use unique pointer or shared pointer perhaps, but there's also a time where you need new and delete. So don't think that this has completely replaced new and delete. In my opinion, it has absolutely not replaced new and delete. It's just something that you should probably do when you just need to declare a heap allocated object and you don't particularly want to tidy up after yourself because it's, you don't need to kind of explicitly call delete or explicitly manage that memory. In those cases, you should be using smart pointers. Use, use unique pointer whenever you can because it has a lower overhead, but if you absolutely need to share between objects or you just can't use a new, you just can't use a unique pointer, then use a shared pointer, but definitely go in that order first. Unique pointer first preference, shared pointer second preference. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, you can hit that like button. I know YouTube's changed. I, I said it was like, the, uh, I said it was there last time, but now it's like in the middle. It's like here or something. I don't know. Anyway, you can click that like button if you enjoyed this video. Leave any suggestions you have for future videos and all that in the comment section below, as well as any questions you may have. I have a Discord server where you can also ask questions, link in the description below. And if you really like this video and you like this series and you want to support it and you want to see more videos, then you can go to patreon.com forward slash the churner, pick up some sweet rewards by helping to support this series. I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.